So now it's time to make our game look just a little bit better. Let's go ahead and open it up. And some of the changes I want to make include making the title of every area stand out a little bit more. And I want the links to have a little bit more of a Halloween color to it. Maybe make this items thing stand out a little bit more, underline it, and that sort of thing. Let's close this. So to get started, let's open the crypt passage. And here is where knowledge of HTML is going to come in handy, because we're going to use that to manipulate the style of some of our text. In particular, we're going to come up here to inside a crypt, and I'm going to surround it with h2 tags, which are header tags in HTML. So put that at the front, and close that tag out. So if you don't know, header tags have six different degrees corresponding to different default sizes. Using CSS, we could manipulate the size of this text ourselves, but h2 works. And now I also want it to be bold. So nested inside of these tags, I'm going to put a b tag. And b is for bold. If I wanted things to be italic, I could use a little lowercase i. If I wanted it to be underlined, I could use a u. But this will work for right now. Now, I am going to have to do that for every one of these passages, so I'll be right back. Okay, a little bit of a tedious process, but now every title in the passages is surrounded by h2 tags, inside of which it is also surrounded by bold tags. So let's close this. And before running the game, we may as well also come into the story caption, because I also wanted to change this item header. So I'm going to start by surrounding it with b tags. And inside of that, I'm going to put U for underline. You gotta make sure you've got the syntax correct. And then I actually also want to give this an ID so I can target it specifically. And the way I'm going to do that is by surrounding the whole thing inside of a span tag. And now to assign it an ID, I have to give it an attribute. So we will say ID equals, and then inside of quotation marks, we'll just say item, items. Okay, so we can close that now. And the last thing I want to do is affect the colors. And the way we're going to do that is by using CSS, or style sheets. And we can gain access to that by coming down to the title of the game, clicking on the arrow, and you see Edit Story Style Sheet. So if you're familiar with web programming and know CSS, this is exactly the same thing. First, I'm going to deal with the color of those links, which is A for the anchor. I'm going to use the braces, say color, change it to orange, add a semicolon, and end with a squiggly brace. There are many, many properties that CSS can affect, so learning a little bit about it is definitely worth your time. Next, all those headers that I created, we're going to say H2 color. I want those to be red. And then finally, the items on the sidebar there, I will target specifically using its ID. To target an ID, you need to use the hash, and then the name, and then it's just the same thing. Color orange. Make sure you have the semicolons in there. And then the last, last thing I want is the actual title of the game that is on the top of the sidebar. And for this, we're actually going to be using a special built-in ID, which is called story-title. We'll say color red. So this story title is a twine-specific ID that is given to that element. So now, if we close this, everything should be changed. And there we go. The title is red. Items is underlined in bold, and it's orange. What we are using as a title for each of the passages is now in bold and is using the header to script, which you can see is adding a little bit of space beneath it now. And each of the links is in orange, although when we hover over it, it turns to blue. We can also use CSS to affect the hover color, but I'm okay with leaving it as is. All right, there we go. So that helps make things stand out just a little bit, but we can go one step further and add images and audio, which we'll do in the next episode.